second shed again, as you can see, this is a is a barn, and I suppose this pile of utter rotten nasty turd here counts as a barn find. Um, I think it may have been described as what you could say has sort of had its day, but um, we only wanted one bit out of it. They're sat there, Fudgy got very excited about them. So uh, he's on to ramps. We're gonna drag this top quality turd on, take it back to the yard. Right, so we've got our top quality purchase back. Now, me and Fudgy had um, the bonnet opening mechanism machine working very well. So, we had to use some technical equipment. Go on, Fudge, open her up and let's see what we've got under here. Ooh, that's a big load of spider stuff, isn't it, or spider inch? Look at that. That's, yeah, don't, yeah. Do you reckon there's a possibility this car might be a bit rusty? Uh, a bit of surface rust there's, there's, there's a bit of surface rust here and there. Yeah. Right, so Mr Ford, that would appear for a man that knows cool about Fords to be a cross flow, wouldn't it? That's a that is a cross flow indeed, and she is a 1300 block. Rubbish. So that's, that's yeah. That, yeah, that's not a 1600 cross flow. Pretty, might have been. But it's got the chrome to get you home. Uh, yes, it might get you somewhere, and we appear to be lacking in some fundamental radiator type stuff. Mm. And I, mean, I don't know whether the fan belt, I can't leave her on the fan belt to test the turning of the engine because it's broken. Hang on. Can we do it? Boy. Skill and brilliance. Where have we got? Hang on, I better answer the phone. What I didn't start with at all. Now, we have bought some rusty shit before in our lives. But this, this is good. Yeah. The sills. I mean, the fact that the jack point fell out on the way home on the lorry, I think she might be a bit past her best. <coughs> but, before I open this door, Look at them. They are a pair of, we are assuming, or we're pretty sure, they are 2.8 leather Recaro Capri seats. So fudgy. He's very excited about them. So he's having them. And then I'm going to have to try and dispose of the rest of this horrible pile of turd. It's got some of them Rostyle wheels on it. Three of the tyres. We, uh, yeah, she's a bit past her best, isn't she? The chrome might be a bit pitted there. Oh, that's a beauty ring. What have we got the rest of the beauty rings? Right. It's all right. We're only doing a bit of uh, top quality vid filming, so, and we get to the front. So, that bit's not very good. Um, that bit there. May have sort of fallen off. Yeah, that was rubbish. And then we get in here. So you would have seen us open the bonnet a minute ago before the missus rung me halfway through me, uh, me video. Eat your box. She has expired a bit. Uh, I mean, unbelievably, the strut tops are quite good. But as for the rest of it, I think you'll find that is dead. But what we're going to try and do for YouTube quality is see if we can get that to bust off. Because we have the other problem we seem to have is someone has a locked the driver's door and it won't open. So we've got more of the more of the nastiness going on here. I mean, uh, let's be honest, that has, uh, that has had its day, is not it? Look at that. She is a buggered, basically. This is a parts rig. It, well, as long as you don't want any body work. I think the boot lid's all right. Is the boot lid all right? Yeah, the boot lid's is all right. It's probably the best panel on the car. And the air conditioning windows work. 
So, I mean, the fact that you can see clean through the inner wing, hey, and I mean, this is, that's not very good. So anyway, we're gonna see if uh, we can get that to turn over the final bit, just to make sure that no one thinks I'm gonna be destroying a beautiful classic Ford. Now this would have been, I think that was the rear valance that's gone. So we have the fuel tank here. I think you'll find, and I mean, if you look up at, that's the rear chassis leg there. Yes, yes, that's, that's fell off. And I have a feeling the likelihood of the fuel tank holding the petroleums is pretty small. I mean, um, we've got some, oh, that's just misplaced itself. That's why, look, I'll fix that. Hang on. There we are. Look at that. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, I think that back axle might be worth the having to someone. I don't know what that is. I'm not a Ford man. And it would appear that the exhaust has fell off. Right, Fudgy. Are we going to attempt to try and turn this top quality pile of stuff over? You have got the tools for the job, ready for the job. So we stand in amazement to see if this Ford engine turns over or is absolutely stuck fast. Nah, a... Have you got your muscles ready? Oh, oh! Is that revolutioning or is the bolt? That's... Hang on, hang on! I'm going to go through oh, the front he's... shot. He's turning over. Go on. Oh, how? Is there any compressions? Probably wasn't many compressions I in the beginning. I don't think there's many compressions. You don't? Oh, do you think we run out of the compressions? Yeah, there's not a lot of compressions. Oh. Was that a hint of a compression? That was a hint of compression. A hint of a compression? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what we have to, what we have to work, can we work it out through here to whether it is pimped up? Because there is a box in the boot. With Kent Camage. There's a Kent Camage box in the boot. I'm just going to go in the boot. That's about the only good panel. Apart from maybe that bit there is a bit shit. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. Right. So we have got a Kent Cam's performance... Valve drain components and a selection of half used spares. What we reckon is some Capri rear shoes that aren't a lot good. We do have a spare starter motor. Is the original spare wheel or is that a rusty style? Oh, hang on. What wheel's that, Fudge? No. Uh, that looks sort of. Escort? Yeah. It's a narrow, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a narrow one. It's no, ugh, it couldn't have been a wide one, could it? No. No, that's not worth anything, is it? No, that's probably like a, a, a old Mark III Cortina, Mark II yeah. Cortina, maybe. Poverty pack wheel, well, we'll put. I almost got excited there for a minute. But it's Pirelli. Yeah, I mean, I want to be going fast down the road on that. I mean, um, that is not past its best at all. No. Look at the tread on that. For a couple of years. God, it's got some nice 1970 smelly orange carpet in here. Look at that. <laughs> it's got some on this side too. Oh. It's got to be bad <laughs> when your tin of. That's a tin of penetrating oil and it's actually rotted <laughs> out. <laughs> and it hasn't. In, and it's still got. It's never been opened. It's got, it's the, it's got the straw on it. But it obviously didn't work because it didn't save when it burst that bit of the car in there. Oh. But we're all right because we've got a tub of teacup. We could make this car. Look we can make new. this car look brand new. <laughs> yeah. Ah, there's the bottom of the tin of um, of penetrating oil. I can't actually pick it up because it. Oh, it's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, what do we, do we reckon that? that I mean, oh, what's that, lemonade? <sighs> I reckon. There's some bubbles going on inside there. Is that lemonade? 
I mean, it's an old Sainsbury's bottle. It's not a bottle of Whittle, so that's an upside. Yeah. I mean, um, some floaty stuff that, that could be there. proper genuine, like, 1970s water. That could, I mean, on an internet auction site, that could be worth some money. It'd be worth more than that prime stuff, though. Yeah, it could be, could yeah. be. I mean, I'm not actually sure I really want to go rooted in here, because this is... I don't know if you can ask what that is. No. 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 That's a brake spring, and it's a new one. Now we've got the wheel brace, so we're saved. We do buy some shite, don't we? We do, we do. I only bought this because you wanted the seats. I know, that's, that's... The entire reason for buying an entire vehicle and the bloody aerials broke off. Uh-huh. Oh. So basically, I bought some Recaro seats. Recaro seats are strapped to a pile of rust that no one's going to want. I mean, there may be some crazy angle box people out there who are going, look at all the stuff on that. I mean, all the chrome, we've got one chromey bit of trim left, because yeah, no one's nicked that one. Most of the other chromey bits have gone, haven't they? We've got well, rear we've light got, holders. We've got the rear chromey light bits. We haven't got the, the, the plastic or glassy lens bits. No. We have got quite a posh fucking fuel cap. Pretty stuff. Yes. If you team... oh, he obviously didn't want them to siphon it, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he locked, this Mainly one. locked that one to make sure that no one could siphon the fuel tank. Luckily enough, the fuel tanks <laughs> fell out the bottom of the car anyway, so there isn't a worry about anyone stealing any fuel out of it. So, where do you reckon the battery is supposed to go on an angle box? I would say that section there is the old battery box. Oh, yes, so that was that. There's, there's, we just get it back to where it's supposed to be. Given a, given a, and it's got one of them remote start. Clunk, 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 clunk. It does feel like it functions. Yeah. It's got the hole in the front as well for the old winder up, Sally. No, oh, but we haven't. Hang on, no, we haven't got the winder up, Sally, have we? Hang on, have we got the winder up, Sally? We ha oh, no, it's a wheel brace, isn't it? That ain't going to wind it up. Ah. Uh, I don't think so. No. Oh, worst comes to worst, we'll have to bump start it. We have got the opening rear, rear windows. Is that like a posh optional? So, yeah. Well, I'll dare you to get in the back and try and open that. It's a bit sticky in there, isn't it? I mean, I have demonstrated that this air conditioning system here worked once already. And the door might not open. This, this one kind of... And it is definitely a 105E, because it says so on the windscreen. Yes. Yes. Right, we'll um, see what we can do with, with that. It certainly was. It certainly was. I mean, that, that swift, swift. I mean, we've only bent a few bits of it. That's exactly how they do it on car SOS. Oh, I've seen that where they what cruise them in a mini digger, drag it off the back of a lorry because none of the wheel, wheels will go around, bend yep. it in the process. I to be honest, I don't even fucking car OS could save this. SOS could save this. I now, don't think anybody. Before would. anyone shouts at us for for manhandling this like we did, this thing is. She's dead. Mm. I mean, she might. You might get a few panel cuts out of the roof, maybe. Some but we've windows. seen some rust in our time. But I mean, I don't think the fact that the seat rails have fell through the floor, <laughs> the chassis legs on the back have actually fallen over sideways because they've got so much rust in them. <laughs> Sadly, the bonnet has slammed itself when we managed. When I managed to near drop you from twenty foot. One, yeah. But yeah. So we're going to have to get the expert bonnet opening tools again because it's about the only latch that really works on it. <laughs> It's that bonnet latch is minty, isn't it? <laughs> it is. oh, and the door lock. The door lock works as well. Well, that, that door's definitely locked because that <laughs> door is not coming it. under. You can't open it. Well, I have resisted putting a, um, a rip saw through it to cut it off. <laughs> so, what we're going to do, as we have demonstrated earlier, this engine appears to turn over. It has a starter motor. Start and it, we also have a spare one if this one doesn't function. We do, we so do. So, there's a possibility between the two we may be able to make a... Brum, brum. But yeah, so we've got a twin down draft, what we assume is a Weber, mm -hmm. a four branch exhaust manifold, four branchy manifold, 
and a quite a posh inlet manifold by the look of things. Indeed. The possibility of a Kent cam. Mm -hmm. And say Kent, well, the valve train kit in the back is definitely the original one, so one would assume that the I'd Kent valve train kit, it in the there. hardened valve springs are in here. Yes. Full race. So full race. So I think we get, we're going to need some petroleum, aren't we? So mm -hmm. I'll have to get that tonight and we'll have a go tomorrow. We have a lawnmower tank. We do. We do. Especially adapted especially for, for this purpose. Once we've got the bonnet open again. <laughs> we've, got, we've got to get the magic keys out, haven't uh, we? Yeah, well, yeah, I think we haven't got an ignition key. And I no, think the likelihood no. of lots of fire is fairly high. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this could so, be a little bit exciting. <laughs> so I think the possibility maybe of just plumbing up the coil. Because someone's already liberated the um, the dynamo or the alternator they have. that was fitted on it. They have. And someone's stolen the radiator. Very but inconvenient. We but have got some radiator hoses in the boot. We have. We've got that knackered old Capri. Oh, you're thinking radiator. it's a Nike, isn't it? That's what I was yeah, thinking. We have got that horrible Capri. And we've got some zip ties. We have. And some bungee straps if we get serious. And some rad seal. We do. If, need if, to if, if the radiator is that bad. Oh, I don't think it needs to hold water for very long. <laughs> And I mean, there's the theory. I mean, I don't. Neither of us have tried the hydraulic clutch pedal yet, have we? No. I mean, probably. We probably hope it. I was. I was scared to go through the floor. Of, of, to be, to well, you have stolen the seats. I, I, yes. It was the first thing that got liberated. It so was the first. Fudgy was desperate for the two eight Capri seats. Is the only reason we bought this pile of hideous. That's, I had to pay for this. That's what it was. Purely for the seats. For the so seats. the first thing he did in his lunch hour is nick the seats. Mm -hmm. yeah, for test driving purposes, that's not very good. No, so we're going we're to liberate the milk. milk we're gonna, we are milk. going to need twin milk crates, aren't we? Yeah, the milk crates that were in the Capri, I suppose and we could put in here. It does smell like a slightly mouldy. Well, there does appear to have been some chrome wiper blades that have appeared from underneath your seat removal exercise. <laughs> yes. And I mean, um, and and we, have too got, we have got a vintage copy of the auto Ooh. from 2003. Oh, oh look at Toyota Celica GT on a J. £2,795. Mind you, it would have been worth it back then, wouldn't it? There is, there is that little little badge thing which is from the Ford Anglia 105E owner's car. Oh, do you remember the bargain car section that was in this? Bargain basement. There is, bar there is a bargain. It's full of Suzuki SJ410s. There is a load of Renault traffic. T3000 and a, and a T1000 ITOM. Mm. £550. No debt. Yes. And it's from 2 litre GTS on a G. It's got she's got a new MOT, she's 995, Mark 1. Let's gonna go and depress ourselves. What I can't remember what colour the classic car section was. Oh. Performance and sports cars. Ooh, there's gonna be a Capri in there. There's bound to be. I seem to I seem to keep ending up the, on the Toyota pages for some reason. Estates and MPVs. God blimey, when a 306 turbo diesel was like four grand. Ooh. Where's the classic cars? Uh, perhaps this is before. Oh, that's a commercial section. Avoid the commercial tractors. Salvage and breakers. Diatsu 4 track diesel commercial. C reg. New tyres, new radiator. Needs an MOT. £395. Wow. Mark 1 Shogun. MOT, 5 speed. God, I thought it could be here for hours, couldn't it? I mean, I wonder if I can actually find something for sale in here that I may possibly own. You never know. You never, never know. know. Yeah. Uh, left hand drive and classic cars. Right, 1970 two door coupe BMW 2800i. Mm -hmm. £2,700. Cool. 635 CSI, switchable sports art on an ace, generation one, mm -hmm. 1800 quid. Ooh. So, what, what are they worth now then? 635, mm. six, I suppose, five, six grand as a start. It's not a bad little markup. Oh, we're going to get to the 
So I haven't found a full complete one. I found some common gears. I would imagine there'd, there'd be like Mark II Escorts in there as well for like there isn't matching the cheap enough. prices. Ah, I think it's because I'm there's a big chunk in the middle of it. It's a bit sweaty and horrible. <laughs> Have they put them that bit where they put bits in the middle so you've got half the cars one side and half the cars the other? The release of a brand new Lotus Elise. Hang on, events and listings now. I'm back in the bargain cars again. Bargain cars is the place. Astra GTE, eight valve, right? Mm -hmm. G Reg, 110,000 miles, full service history, 12 months MOT, 800 squid. You could put a naught on the end of that, mate. You could. Shitty 1.6 diesel Astra van on an F. New clutch, cam belt, drive shaft, 475. A Tata load beater van. Ooh. You don't see them anymore. Tata. I mean, there's a freely RI Supra here, Mark II, for 995, and she's fucking manual. A Toyota Space Cruiser. Look. When Come was on. the last time you saw a Toyota Space Cruiser? Well, I, mean, there is, there is, I bet all this stuff is gone. Wouldn't it be? I mean, if we were really sad, we could sit here and check all the registration numbers. Foxwell Calibre, 2 litre 16 valve on a G. Mm -hmm. Senator, 2.2 turbo diesel. I thought they were 2.5 turbo diesel. Mm. Perhaps that's a misprint. Oh, I mean, there is some quality vehicles in here. What else have we got? Mm, Renault Clio. Yeah, see, the Clio would have been pretty modern then. She was like l Mmm. Renault 25. Peugeot 205. There's lots of 205. Oh, this patrol short wheelbase 2.8 on a B. Yeah. Excellent engine, needs some welding. Wouldn't believe that with this patrol no. short. 300 pounds. God, the guy would say, I must have missed that because I'd have owned that at the time. <laughs> it would have been parked around the side here. When was 2003? Were things that things weren't that cheap in 2003, were they? I think they were. I think they did. 205 GTI 1.9 on a C. Yeah. White. It's got an induction kit. 57 9 kit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alarm immobiliser, sports exhaust, lowered on 16 inch alloy wheels. £650 on their offer. Wow. There's a 1.6 next door to it for 800 quid. My Lord. Put Another, uh, 309 GTI H Reds low mileage, clean and tidy car, 12 months MOT in Exeter, 750 pounds. There's a there's a green Goodwood special edition one here for a grand. Shall we phone them up? Shall we see if they <laughs> found this 2003 magazine? Yeah, just wondering if you still have to have your Goodwood there's green. HPE. Angler 105 Deluxe, first registered the 1st of 4th, 1965. Mm -hmm. 1500 high compression engine. What's 1500? It's 1500. Ooh. Suspension 1200 drums, rear standard 997 drums, interior standard but with Capri half leather front seats. Interior, interior, wheels Ford 13 inch Ross style. They are nice. Uh, in the future, respray blue and white front disc brakes and uprate rear springs. Cost of the car, £275. Cost of scrap car, 50 quid. That's gone down. Cost of MOT, £28, 20 to 28 to 50 quid. Loads of spares, £100. Cost to me, £253.50. We may need to keep that useful piece of information. I've got some good windows. Yes, that's enough. We haven't got much else to say. Good. <laughs> what you want. Apart from the fact that you don't seem to be, I mean, as the Ford expert, you didn't make an identify that that was a 1500 no, high compression I actually crossbow. thought that was a 13, in all honesty. I thought that was a 13. Well, it's a good job we read the piece of paper that was it in is. the back. It is. So if anyone wants a 1500 high compression crossbow. With a Kent cam. With a Kent cam. And whatever that front axle was, or a set of 13 inch Ross deep dish Ross styles. Deep dish Ross styles. I bet they're worth something. I think so. Right. Yeah. It tastes looking more profitable. Perhaps we'll actually get out of the fact that we bought the car for the seats and them. Um, yeah. 
Anyway, we're going to stop taking the piss and try and get this to go. Right. So what we have decided to do is get this manky, horrible-looking thing to go. So down here, we have found that's almost a reasonable battery. We have found the um, positive lead, which we have hammered on. And then we appear to be completely lacking in a negative lead, don't we? We do. So sure. we found this sort of thing here that looks like... That was the one that identified as a negative lead on the Capri the other week, wasn't it? Yes, it did. So I think if we make it identify off of... See which ones you can shear off over there first. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, um, Yeah, well, I, I'm not, I could have a go from this, this side. That, yeah. Right. Nothing like using a 30 mil spanner on an half inch thingy. Oh, oh, I did lubricate that earlier on. Hang on, let me give it some more lubrication. Oh, yes. No. Um, Don't yeah. go damaging the top quality bodywork. There's a bit of hessian sack there, exactly. isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. It's not attached to very much. Oh, it does appear to be coming undone. It does. There is hope yet. Well, don't you go damaging that top quality fuel line. I should have bought a ratchet out version. Yeah, I did wonder why you didn't. Yeah, well... But we're going old we're, school. We're going old school. I mean, and the fact that, you, that that's a half-inch, probably imperial bolt, you're undoing it with a 30 yeah. mils spanner. I mean, that just shows the quality of our mechanical abilities, doesn't it? It does, it does. Yeah. We can adapt. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, we might make it a bit difficult to clean the points. We may have to work our way around that in a bit. Because the current, the battery is actually leaning against the distributor. Oh. I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> if I give this a scrape over here like that to make sure that we've got a top quality earth, mm -hmm. I think that'll work. I'm desperate to see, once we've done this, to see if the heater fan's going to work. Because it is a bit chilly today, isn't it? So well, we're going to need... We're gonna and need... I found the wire for it. There are two wires, one of which appears to be going... down there somewhere into some rust. Because <laughs> there is quite a lot of rust on this. We've got... I have found the oil light wire. Oh, mm -hmm. that. Because we are going to have to test for the oil pressures, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Save killing this poor little 1500... Pre-cross play. Pre -cross play. Because that's about the only thing on this, apart from the wheels, that is actually worth anything. Right. Right. Have you got the negative battery terminal? I have thing, got have the uh, what identifies as. Where did you find that? That's rubbish. <laughs> it's just one of yours. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't know where I got that. That looks like it came out of a crack. <laughs> right. So shall I try pushing the button that's down here for start remote starting and see if anything happens? Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. No. Let's try pushing it a bit harder with the bar. No. Right, let's try... Oh, we've definitely got power there, because that was an arc, wasn't it? I think there is a fair chance we might need to be beating on this starter motor. Right, I'll go and get the uh, starting hammer. I mean, yeah, we might need a starting hammer extension, because... But it has got one of them things where you can twiddle the end of it, I think. And it does appear to be fairly well seized solid. Oh. So I think what we'll do is we'll get a pair of mole grips, mm -hmm. and if we twiddle on it and beat it at the same time, I think that stands a good chance of bringing it back alive. Yeah. Otherwise, there is a reason that there's another starter motor in the boot, because that one's rubbish. <laughs> and then we have to draw straws, and who wants to attempt to jack this up, lie underneath it, and change the vacuum? Yeah, well, we could, yeah. We could. The other choice is that we move five vehicles, because mm -hmm. obviously there's loads of space around here, and we haven't parked all of that lot, including the large army camper van in front of it, and pick it up with a forklift. But I have a feeling if we attempt picking it up with a forklift and some extension ties, it might fold in half. It might fold in half. Mm. Yeah. And seeing as someone actually wants it. Wants Unbelievably, to be, yeah. Well, it's going to it's going to a good home. It's going to save another one of these that isn't rusty. That's this. 
You know, I think we, we have come up with a grand and cunning plan of beating on that starter motor. Yeah. I mean, I could attempt lubric remotely lubricating some of it from here. That might help it a bit. I'll lubricate that bit. And I mean, I can get to the top bolt from up here. Mm -hmm. And it does look like you can almost sort of see the bottom bolt. And we know that the starter motor is not stuck in because we can turn the engine over, can't we? Yeah. So I think we need hammer paramole grips first. Mm -hmm. And then once we've got it doing the turny thing, then we can work on the electrical system or the fire. Well, actually, we haven't even checked it for fire yet, have we? No. Well, it is non-fire, so we're assuming that that's, <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> Because there isn't any fire yet. I mean, we could get really posh and attempt to turn the key that we haven't got. But that does sound like a lot of effort. It does. When really, we only want to see if that works. The rest of this is rubbish. I mean, let's be honest, I'm not even probably going to plumb it up with a fuel pump. I think we're going to use the normal tank up here somewhere. I think so. Yeah. Gravity feed. Right, you go and get hammer. I might adjust the camera angles and see if the, looking from up there works, whether it's really strange and all we can see is the bald spots on the top of both of our heads. Well, on my head, you yeah, sorry. Well, you know, you, I, I could have one. I could uh, have one. I don't you know. You could, but you haven't yeah. got one. Oh, well, there, well, there you are then. And you haven't got a bald spot. You've just got the bald flashes. <laughs> I've just got a, flashes. a big forehead. Fla flashes coming in, yeah. <laughs> well, it's what we called slap heads when we were at school. The older I get, the less, the more, yeah, face, the more face I get, the more face. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You're all doing really well on the nasty Chinese mole grips today. What do you want to think you were rooting in that drawer in my toolbox? It's all full of rubbish mole grips that are used for welding purposes. <laughs> now, what I'm trying to do is get in here with the world's Lindsay Draper. Yes. Let's have a look at the Let's see if we can twiddle this bit on the end of this starter motor here. Let's see if the starter motor attached to it twiddles. Not a lot of twiddling going on there. I don't know whether that is supposed to be. I think that is the end of the starter motor. We may need to remove the battery quickly to allow us better access to the end of the starter motor. We could really do not having the battery sat right there, if we were honest, could we? Yeah. Let me just move this battery mounting bracket so <laughs> I can get some access in here. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah. On it? Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of movement going on there. And I'm assuming that is the end of the starter motor. It seemed to not want to turn. I could be completely... I don't know whether that is. It's a drive. Who'd have thought that? Should we all have a look at the spare star motors in the brilliant. boot? Yes. And then we can work out whether we're just about to break it or we're actually having a sensible idea. And I don't know whether I'd trust that boot thingy for sticking your head in there like that, but that's your choice. Does that turn with the... Has it got like a square? Yeah. Square shank there, turny, turny. Right. So what size is that, do you reckon? Because... Because that's the same. Is that square? I don't think the one on here is square. Let's install that there a minute. No, no, the one on here is square. So, I reckon if I hit it a bit to, to persuade it into moving first. Yeah. By gently tapping on the end of here. Because this one definitely does not turn round. And we may need to find a better quality pair of mole grips to beat on it with in a minute. But we'll give these a go, seeing as they're here. Oh, I lied. Oh. Doing the revolutions. Ooh. Right. It's definitely doing the revolutions. I mean, it doesn't sound very nice. No. But, right, let's <coughs> we'll go that side then and we'll reinstall the battery. We could do with a, 
Well, I suppose we can. No one said you had to have a battery up the right way, did they? No. Oh. Oh. oh, that doesn't work, does it? We reckon if I push this, worry noises. No worry noises. So, it flashes, which is more than it did a minute ago. Can I get in here and turn it and hit it at the same time? It's doing some description. I've got a flash across it now, which I didn't have before. Juvenate on it a bit. No, there isn't much turning going on there. We definitely could do with somewhere else to put the battery. Mm. Because we've got a really great long set of leads on it. So that'd be a help, wouldn't it? Put this on the end of it and then take me fingers off with it when it decides to turn. And we are obviously assuming that it's going to turn. Ooh. It was making the right noises then. Now stop making the right noises again. a bit more. And I've just removed the remanufactured label off the side of it. That just fell off. <laughs> that in there to keep continuous power to it. And then hit it. Yes. Which does nothing. and breaks on my fingers. Mm. No, I don't think it will. Mm. No. 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 But I think it will be all right. Yeah, it is showing some description of flash across the terminals, but I don't think that's going to matter. He's dead. Oh, that's good. Okay. I've definitely got power, because um, I've got a nice arc right across the side of what we assume to be the brake master cylinder. Rubbish. Right. That means we're going to have to test on... Test to see if this one works. ...which has got a broken lug on it. Uh, well, it's got it's got half a lug. Half a lug. That one does do the revolutions, whereas yeah, he's he's quite smooth. Whereas this one doesn't. Whereas do that any, one doesn't. Doesn't. So I reckon if we try this, try 
see if we got this one to spinny spinny. And if he does, then we'll whack that one out, whack this one in. Yeah, I mean, I can beat on this a bit more first. I mean, let's be honest, I'm not going to devalue it at all, am I? No. No. I mean, it, it attempted, so we're assuming that the brushes are probably a bit rubbish. Because it made the sort of noise when you thought it was going to go earlier. And then nothing much else happened. I can try rejuvenating on the end of it in a different place. I think if I can knock those brushes. Let's rejuvenate on that bit. And then, um. I must have, it must be a good idea to see if this is. Just a bit of flashing across there just to see if this actually works. Oh, she is good. That actually works. So. Sort of does the clunky clunky stuff. That must be here somewhere, isn't it? Now that's there. How the actual solenoid functions? Because we could get all posh and put a bit of wire on it. Oh, clickety click. Cheek, 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 cheek. So we've got a functioning solenoid. Yeah. We just don't actually have a functioning starter motor to go with it. No. And I think what we're going to have to do is go, is go and bench test that top quality device there. Yeah. And then... For that bottom bowl, I think we just get a load of extensions. Oh, we could come right out the front. Straight out the front, bosh it off. Let's face it, if we're only putting the top one on, that one, because the bottom one's a bit... We'll just snap it clean off, won't it? It's going to break it in half if we do that. We, so we, we might yeah. have to do a professional job and put both bolts in. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, should we test this one? Well, yeah. We go bench testing on that one, which involves basically clamping it to a very large jump start pack and see if it goes round your head. Yep. So I could do that in a minute. Yeah, I'll go and get some extensions. And some... I think socket. Probably just charring it with a six-sided 13. Six-sided 13. We have got our think socket set. We have got an Imperial socket set. It used to be Dom's mm -hmm. in a blue Draper box somewhere. It's going to be like the Draper Day of quality. Yeah. I mean, we have got a set of ratchetable posh Imperial spanners that we never use, obviously, because we don't really have that much Imperial stuff. We did get them out for a Mini a while ago. We did. So we've got to get the connection off the end of it. That shouldn't be terribly difficult. Mm -hmm. On the on oh, yeah, on the no, no, no. I'll lubricate on that a bit. So I suppose if I go and test that, yep, I'll go and grab some. You go and grab some tools. Let's take etc. the um, let's take the negative battery terminal off just to make sure that we don't end up with a load of fire <laughs> when we're not here. <laughs> um, and I think we need to come up with a better idea for a negative. Because we have got, that is a really long battery terminal, isn't it? Yeah. A positive one. Positive one. So if, we, if, I, the, screw, on, if I screw that on here, that means we could sort of put the battery... We could rest it up on the top there. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to damage that top quality air box, because, I mean, that looks like a useful part, that does, doesn't it? Mm. Will it hold the weight? I was wondering that. She yeah. doesn't look the best, does she? Ooh. Right, let's cut the comedy. Yep. Let's you go take things. I'll go and beat on that and get it to work. Yep. And then I suppose we can get, once we've got that working, then we're into testing the sparkles to see if um, that coil that we found in a damp boot works. Yeah. No, we're obviously open. There's a set of points of rotor arm and that stuff in there because we haven't even we haven't that, checked, checked that. No, yeah. But no. I mean, if it won't turn over, then yeah, right. Okay. Plan. Right. So we've got Ooh. just dropped a load of bits off the battery back again. So 
And what we've done, we've run a bit of a cane on this end. Now, obviously, this is the Bendix slidey bit at the moment. That doesn't move. This is starter motor number two. That's my microphone. So, obviously, a starter motor test bench, just in case you haven't realised that. Not an old saw bench that we use for bidding and stuff. So, hopefully, if I gap this on here, this turns. Nope. That doesn't do any of that. And it is turned on, this one. Oh, dear. So, let's look. Oh, yes, it does. So, that means the motor works. All we've got to do now is get the Bendixie bit on the end to function. Going to go and need to bash on that a bit. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling. Uh, where's the new... Oh, yeah, you got that, you got that bit. Yeah, I've got this bit. If you wedge it in, I can probably wedge the top belt on from up here. Yeah. If you're happy groveling around in the dirt down there. Ooh, lovely. You, yeah, well, at least you've got some nice nice grass to lie on. Well, that's it. it yeah. As long as there's no grass next to come through. Uh, I don't think we've got any there, dear. So what size do we want the terminal? Do we know? Uh, Towards close me? to the top, I think. Yeah. See if I can get my hand in there. Now. Let's see how that in there. I don't want to fit in the hole, but it did look like the same. Oh, it is the same style as motor. Like that. Where's the terminal bit? Where was it? Over that side originally. Uh, can you remember? No, I think it's closer to you. Right, yeah, right there, isn't it? Yeah. I've got the top one in. Beautiful. I lined that up for you perfectly. Oh, you did? You did a good job there. Yeah. Don't just like tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this the bottom bolt here or is this the other one that I had that was spare? Oh, that's above the bottom bolt. Right. Okay. Is that the bottom bolt? I don't know. Bottom, yeah. yeah, right, cool. What happened to the other bottom? Two. No, because you must have two no, down there because we've got two out at the top, haven't we? Slightly yeah, different. Yeah, well, 15, 15 more. There we go. I've got the got the bottom starter yeah. motor box. I've got two now. Well that's because you took two out up here but one of them wasn't the starter motor box. Ah. That's why we broke the last starter motor while I was trying to get it off, isn't it? Ah. So you have that one, if I have that one back as a belt over the bolt, yeah. it's bigger, isn't he? No, they're all the same, they're the same, they're the same size. Right. Right. We'll put that back in here. That was just here, besides the bolt board, that's the other one starter motor. Do you want to waggle it around a bit or is it alright? Uh, I'm gonna do what there, all right. Put the top one there. Come here. It's difficult to tell. On the machine. Oh, get in the middle. Get in the middle. Oh, I'll put me in it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put I don't think I'm gonna come to use me a bit. Because you would have thought it was from us locating something, wouldn't it? Mm. I reckon it's there. Can you actually see where it's supposed to go or not? No. no. Because we're not sure that's in the right spot yet. No. Um, I can feel that I can feel the hole from the back. Mm. Yeah, so it's got a kind of twist anti-clockwise. So you've got to kind of go there. Uh, it's, it sort of doesn't let us into locating anything, I mean, it's, unless it's there. Oh, it's there, on that. Feels about right. Uh 
enough to grab a little jack just to jack her up a little bit and I could think that's not worth it. Yeah. Up towards, up towards the outside of the oops, bit to the left. Yeah, I think. Yeah, there's a boat. Yeah. Beautiful. Top one up first, I think. Uh, right, uh, we'll run the top one up by hand. Let's put it back up. If you've got the 13 mil socket around there, then we can. Um, I think you still put it up there. Uh, no, I definitely passed it down here a minute ago. Definitely, because you run to that part of something. Just have that and a short one. That'll do. Keep yourself lighting that, Sal. All over my face. All over your head. All over my face. I look like an umpa-loompa before the end of this video. Ah, you'll be alright. Like orange. Well, yes, yeah, well, it matched the car. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming the car was a horrible red colour one, so it appears to have been like a burgundy when it was slightly. Can I have the ratchet? Yeah. Might be a burgundy when it was actually original and in slightly better condition than it is now. That's the top one. Beautiful. Tight. You can reach the bottom one. I can do that. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a. The bottom one shouldn't be that much. Shouldn't be too far off. He says. Let's see whether there's any gaps left in this starter motor or not. Otherwise, we're going to have to try and rebuild a bit on the old, the one we sort of beat on earlier. This a what do you want to do it with? Put that pair of things will probably do it, you know. <coughs> yes. Yeah, so I used a ten mil socket, but it might be a different size box to what was on the one that you've mm, got yeah. in there. Probably, yeah, that looks like seven sixteenths. So anyway, that's tight enough. Okay. Another bit of a tool gather up so we don't lose everything in the grass. If you want to chuck those on the back of a recovery truck and I'll refit the battery as it was for a minute just to see if it turns over. Okay. Because I'm not terribly confident. Ooh. Look out, the back of that recovery truck off. 
Yeah, right. sure. Yeah, it's a bit manky at the moment. Isn't it? It's it's <laughs> well, I've done a crap on that. I've done a manky on it. Right. So, in theory, if we bump that on there, like that, and then hit this, it makes popping up. Oh, something made a pop. Yeah, I know that was. Sounds like a good fuse. Might be a neat top quality terminal down the bottom. Of. It's rubbish. It's a really large, sharp lump of rust sticking <laughs> in my arm down here every time I try to do this bolt up. to attend to some slightly better battery leads. Yeah. Better being a very loose word. Because, I mean, how far can we, on that lead there, get this battery out of the way? Because we don't really want it sat in here by the points when we're trying to sort of clean them up. We could have it up there, I suppose, don't we? I mean, it probably won't hurt up there. Yeah, well... We haven't got we haven't got the water pump connected, so it's only the. Actually, we could just put it through the bunk well. There's no water. There's no. There's just, nothing there. We could just sort of stick it out there. That sounds like a plan. That's flatish. Shall, Shall we like, do it? Well, if we do that. I'll change this lead to that other one we found a minute ago. Because I did see a 13 mil span around here somewhere. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's not going to fit in. Ah. Uh, there's probably unless, enough. Unless there's probably enough cableage to have a remote battery, though, isn't there? There we go. That'll do. We can have a remote battery if I can find a way of getting this manky looking. Gonna go and get some spanners. Spanners. Was that what you used to undo the? Um, other, I don't think I don't know what that is up here. No, I think. Well, what am I going to just get some imperial spanners and get posh? Couldn't find me Imperial Spanners. I can't remember where I put them. They're in that pod box, so I just got this 11 mil instead that fits. Now clean and tidy this terminal near his front and get the rest of the car. Or is that just oil on it? No, that's the end having uh, got old and disintegrated, isn't it? You know, like the rubber gets to that stage where it actually starts to come apart. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, yeah. It's gone crispy. So if we have this one, I reckon we'll fit. That might reach out right the front enough. That'll reach the front, I reckon. Yeah, right, I've got it on. Oh, oh, it's escaped again. Uh, yeah, right. Put that underneath. Not and that gives us that I'll as a... Just yeah. locate the battery, turn it round, so that will give us positive. Yeah. Yep, positive reaches. Marvellous. So the positive reaches and clamp the negative on. Hang on, let me just do this up so I don't arc it out on anything because it's getting a bit exciting over here at the moment. Yeah. There's no, I, haven't, I haven't connected the earth. Okay. We're all good. Supply, yeah, I was thinking that. Uh, it does appear that the rodents have eaten this plug lead as well, so it has a 
haven't got any sheathing on the outside of it. I think it's quite close to a man's arm. <laughs> that would be, be quite fun. <laughs> so, that definitely isn't the best I've ever done in my Let's get it. Oh, so in theory, if we hook the battery terminals up, mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to check on the quality. I brought my oil log with me, which is here. So I reckon. So we, are we connected up? Not connected. Let's get set. let's get connected up. Right. We are on. Right, marvellous. So we'll clamp that on there. And that on there. That says that's the oil light. Yep. <laughs> She's yes. out. Right, so we have oil pressure, that's good. Excellent. And we seem to be generating compressions. Yes. So, like the top off of the car, the, the air filter off the carburetor. Yep. So, do you want the uh, top quality? Uh, the Americans call them a crescent wrench, we call them adjustable spanner. <laughs> a crescent wrench. Yeah, it sounds far too posh, that, doesn't it? I mean, it is a spanner that's adjustable in theory, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just drop the bolt. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Right, so yeah, that's, not attached to the that's yeah, that's gonna be. Do we want this off completely, or do we just leave them as is? Because we can get to the throttle linkage. Uh, I do like the way that we've got one Phillips screw and um, and one flathead. I like the precision cutting. That uh, we've but done. we all it's... did things like that. We just hacked it out, threw it on there, didn't you? I mean, the air filtration abilities of that thing are tiny anyway. Yeah. Do you want to see if any of the throttle linkage moves? Both of them move. So first choke, second choke. choke. Right, so the main choke is over here. This side? It, well, that, well and the flappy bit on oh, the top. The that, that is the choke, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. So, I suppose we are coming to the side where we really ought to have a look at the points. Yeah. 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 Just to make sure they are in there. Just to make sure they are in there, otherwise that's going to bring us to a rather grinding halt, because funnily enough, well, they are in here. Oh. It doesn't look too horrific. It's got a bug living in it. I've just thrown the microphone on the floor. There's some spider eggs in here. But, got a rope on. She looks pretty she clean. She okay. Yeah, we'll just hang on, rob that on a tyre. That's nice. And, what's the best way of cleaning the rope? Oh, Peter Booth always used to tell me this. On a tyre? Yeah, he used to swear by it. Oh, good old Pete. Good old Pete. Good. So, we're going to need to affect a coil. We've got a selection of those. We've got a selection. selection of those. Now, do we go sensibly for the one that we know works, or do we try and use the one that was in the boot? Hmm. Hmm. Can I clean on these mm, points a bit? Well, it's going to need a bit of a clean up. I mean, sense would say just use the one that you know works, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Super gold, eh? Super gold. Super gold. Probably isn't super gold. That's no, why it was thrown throw in the boot of the thing in the first place. Super no worky. Super no worky. Right. Right. Um, <coughs> chuck, chuck, oh, chuck everything everywhere. Yes. Right. So what we need to do now then <coughs> is one golf air coil, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So where is the. That's the. the Contact well. That's for the contact breakers. We couldn't have a coil, coil with bits on it, could we? Did the other coil have bits on it? The, no, the, no um, only, well, that, this that one, one, this that one, one has. Well, should we have that one and we'll rob them off? And then at least we're not trying to join two of the totally wrong terminals to the. Has that got two on them or one on them? Just one. It's got, well, it's got two on the one side. Oh, that's fine. We'll just take both of those off. Mm. I think that's two on the one side. 
Mm. Maybe it's just. Uh, have you got the top quality present, Reg? As you have, it's just there. I reckon this is the coil off of it, you know. It almost feels like cheating now using a part that you actually know works. So if we get one of those, that allows us to turn, and then we've adjusted that lead last time to run a Capri, haven't we? So we know yeah. that fits on the positive side of the coil reasonably respectably. channel shows can you know where they have to have some drama yeah like um yeah. it's quite a lot of them I don't, yeah, they I, have don't we, I don't, I don't think i don't think no but. i don't really think so no well they've got to have it done by the end of tomorrow and yeah yeah and then we miraculously do it overnight even though overnight all, yeah yeah right so that on there So, in theory, if we have the positive over here, we don't need to connect the, um, what not need, the HT lead, do we? Because, no. in theory, we're just checking for flashing across the point. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can move the camera in a bit closer, so, might be a good idea, wouldn't it? Let's yeah. just do that and we'll look at some bits of engine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, sparking across the point. Have we got any? Oh, oh yeah, it's just dirty points, isn't it? Something. Right, let's try that again. Put that there, put yours. Right. Let's clean on there a bit, mightn't we? Just to take that off of there. Spot where I put my points file. There I put my points file. Take the crusting that's off in here. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot of. Yeah. I have a feeling I've got a brand new rage cap there. Uh, rage cap thing. Yeah. Brand new dizzy cap there. Yeah, I'll buy accident for one of these. I probably won't be able to find it. It's in a safe place. Uh, well, yeah, because we had one of those. Was it because it's a for Zodiac for contact? No, yeah, something like that. And, it, and then I ordered a road cap for it, and they sent me a full cylinder one. And you were like, Hold on a minute, it's a six cylinder car, you numpty. <laughs> and then I never sent it back. So, but I reckon this one is recoverable. Keep flop that on there. And all I've got to do, if you, all, if you stick your tongue on, on the, the end, end of, of that. that and I'll turn it over and we'll see what happens. It'll only be a fizz like from one of them nine volt batteries. Yeah, it won't, yeah. It, won't it won't hurt. I suppose we could attempt a flash cap and I'd be very surprised. Well, one, if this lead over here doesn't frazzle me because she's, um, <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> going to be a bit juicy, isn't she? Yeah. So that in there. There's top quality wiring going on here. Right. So we hit the starty starty button. Mm -hmm. Oh! Yes! That's the flash button. Right. So, we've got a spark. I mean, the sensible thing would just be to tip a load of fuel down the carb now and see if it coughs, wouldn't it? It would indeed. I think we ought to drink our cup of coffee, mm -hmm. um, smoke some cigarettes, Yep. and then. For quality purposes, tip a load of petrol down the carburetor, attempt to start a fire, and see if it goes. Because we know it's got the oil pressures. Yep. Um, we know the coolant situation is pretty dire because uh -huh. it's not here. But it seems to sort of be doing engine type stuff. And if that lead there is working, I reckon there's a. That's the worst one because the, the mouse is isn't that one. I've got to try. Where's the fan? 
Pretend to be the earth over there. Mm -hmm. Can you get something earth point wise? Look at that. Yeah, I want to see. Rooty, rooty. There we go. Yeah, I'm on I want to earth. see if the blower motor works. No. Oh. Ruin it. Ruin us. Hang on a minute. Hey, magic stick. Where's the magic Where's stick? The ma There's not even any sparking happening, let's be honest. No. <laughs> but we've created more. We've created air flow. more airflow. Yes. <laughs> Right, <laughs> coffee, fags, fags, petrol. Right, beautiful. What we need now, buddy? Mm -hmm. I reckon if we fit, you can go over here and on your side and do that because for production quality, you're supposed to stand over I'm there and I'm on this side. Stop invading my side. I'm going to get me coffee. I think we just for a laugh mount the mower fuel tank up there somewhere and take that fuel line off for a minute. Yeah, we might as well just pour some fuel in that tank. Dap some down the carburetor. Let her have it. It, a, it might bust off, would not it? Otherwise, we've got to go f carburetor cleaning and spark plug cleaning. But we could just give it a go. We just see. We can see if it farts, can't we? We can give it a try. It might crack off beautifully. It might. We know what happens with these things. Right. Oh, you screw that on. I'll uh, screw this off for a minute. If I can get to it. Blow it. Oh, and it's undoing and everything. You know, I can lubricate on it if you want. No, no, no. And the rust is just... Yeah, let's do that. Put that there. And as we have got the Alpha Safety Conscious Fuel Cell Mark II, because lots of people told me off for having this thing sat with two bits of pipe in the passenger seat of a Capri, apparently. Yeah, they that told that. me off for being nowhere near the fuel tank and smoking a fag. Yeah, well, yes, yes, because that's going to kill you. <laughs> They've watched too many films. Well, yes, yes, because that always happens in films. They go, oh, no, I'll just chuck my fag out into petrol and the whole building goes up. Yeah, in, Whereas, reality, in reality, you chuck it in and it just goes out. Yes. I've tried Until it. that one time. <laughs> <laughs> when you mistake a, when you, uh, mistaken a um, sparkler for a cigarette. Right. Yeah, well, I'm gonna, <laughs> I notice the way that I am carefully pouring this in here with a funnel. You'd be an expert. It's because I'm an expert, because I can't be asked to walk back inside and go and get a funnel. It's not about being an expert, it's about being a lazy arse. So, I reckon that should give us enough head of fuel pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest, everything that's in that is going to be congealed all to something. Oh, that's fine. Can you screw that on there, then? Yep. That's genuine Bridge and Stratton now, I'll have you know. Is it? Yeah. Mm. And it's got a hangy uppy device. And I think if you, there's a big hole in the hangy. side of the bonnet over there. Well, there's a big hole in the front of the bonnet. Oh, we could use that one, I suppose. Yeah, for fire safety purposes, that's <laughs> much, <laughs> much, 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 much <laughs> further off. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I, if I bring it over this, this side here. Well, you could just hang it. Well, you could just hang it there, I suppose. Just hang it up. Uh, here we, here we, look at that. Uh, look. Perfect. It's even got the curvature, so you can fill it back up. Yeah, it's like a proper pop, pop, keep going. Proper pot, man. Yeah. Right, that's the tip. Petrol, damn it. Oh, I've got caught up in the tank. Right. Right, I'm going to put this over here for fire safety purposes. So, I'll chop that up so it looks prop, posh, uh, posh, prop, proper and posh. Mm -hmm. I suppose really we ought to move yeah. the ignition source coil thing away from the. Um, we could put it down where you've spilt all that fuel. <laughs> Stops. They'll all tell me off. They email me and everything. Leave me alone. Right. So we've managed to. Well, that half rotted off battery bracket down there um, seems to work really well for holding the coil. I'm going to set fire to myself by lighting my cigarette. You're operating the throttle. Do you want to try operate? Can you operate the choke from your side, or do you want something to poke? There's that screwdriver, right? You can operate the choke using the screwdriver. Come on, you're supposed to be. No, you're supposed to be the Ford. Right you were going the right way. You're yeah. supposed to be the Ford man of this crew, you know? Yeah. Right. I, I don't I'm sure I really want to put my arm through the leads to press the button. <laughs> because I think that could be quite a painful experience. So I'm going to get. Are we ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's pumping snot out of the fuel fit. That's all right. 
Yeah, well, it's, well, it's to be fair, it's that, water. That's water. Right, so hang on a minute. I may need to disable this fuel line down here. That won't hurt, will it? No. So, what we need to do is, you've done that up tight on the end of there, haven't you? Undo that jubilee clip a wee bit so that a man can use it for sloshing fuel in the carburetor. Okay. Like that. I mean, that is sensible, see? Ooh, it's not like much. I'm not sure I'm, our, our fuel supply is terribly good, you know. I might actually need to use the pump. Right. Well, I don't know. He's starting to. Because he's. Yeah, I'm going to have to do him up a little bit because he is chucking a load of fuel out there. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. Mm. 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 Right, you choke. I'll push on the button. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> A fire. That was a <laughs> Bubba. Yeah. Should we try again? Yeah. Should we try some accelerator each? Can you work the accelerator from your side? Yeah. Should we try leaving the choke things with throwing tons of petrol down its yard? Yeah. You can work the throttle. Okay. <laughs> We may actually need to attend to. It can't be squirting any. There's no squirty squirty. Well, that's not really surprising because you're caught, as he says, waving his flag over the top of one. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely no. No, well, I think we, we, we'll probably. We haven't done the old hit it with a hammer. That's a point. It's worked on pretty much every other video. Well, what we could do then, should we should we find a Phillips screwdriver yep. and get removing on this minging air filter? Have we got a Phillips screwdriver out here? We have. If we get removing on this horrible offensive air filter, we can put that in the spares kit in the boot. You can. We can try not to drop the wash. wash. Washer in the, no, yeah. the engines don't like those inside no. them, do they? No. Look at that top quality. Right, so I suppose... For vehicle service purposes, as I hold my fag back here whilst I'm doing these folks, that's not dangerous at all, is it? Nope. And then see what we've got going on in here. Well, they put the washer on the wrong side of the plate. I think you'll find it probably just fell through the large wallet hole in the air filter. You reckon? Mm. I mean, the hole is massive. It is massive. Yeah. Right, I've done my three. There's two your side you can do. Try not to light yourself up using a cigarette. Okay. Well, to be fair, it's not a light at the minute. Oh, that's right. I was going to tuck mine by, behind my ear. <laughs> well, I have to make sure it's out first, because the amount of times <laughs> I've done that and then set fire to the side Oof. of my head. Yeah. It was all right when you had one of them undercuts back in the day and you didn't have any hair around your ears, but apparently they're not the thing anymore. No. Well, I am tempted to plumb this air tank into the genuine original fuel pump thingy, which appears to be full of water. Mm. I mean, it's obviously pumping something from somewhere, so I mean, I can't think that that fuel tank is... Oh, that doesn't move. That fuel tank is actually holding liquid. It's pretty crusty. Well, it was more than pretty crusty. Right, I'm going to get something to cut the fuel line off. Have the top off the fuel pump and see how much water is in it. God, I can believe it's pumping. I need a lubricate on that a bit. Lubrication. Better than what it was. Mm. Ooh. 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 
And that is pretty impressive that that actually pumps on prescription fuel, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice. Nice. <laughs> you have to go back inside and get a rag now. This working out in the yard eh, is a pain in the summer, isn't it? It is. Right. Well, there we go. That'll do for that. Fuck, we're getting a bit posh. We're not going anywhere with it. No, but if she does kick into life and she wants a bit of advance on the distributor... What have, what have we done with it? Have we tried getting the top of the carburetor off? I need you to give it a knock with a... Oh. Right, I'll go and get something to mop all the googe out of the um, fuel pump with. Disconnect that a moment. I'm getting some squirtiness come through. Right. I'll do for a moment is hang that down. Oh, we got some barnacles in here. Ooh, crusty stuff. Hanging around by the doodahs. No, the, flo the float's all right. Just put oh, the, the, the jets, you aren't going to get them out of there, are you? No. I don't think so. We are not trying to turn for hoping, but... Let's just see. Well, it's worse going to worse. We'll have to get... What's the float like? Have we got fuel coming? We've we got, we got plenty of fuel coming through. And the float's working because it stops it... If you hold it up. ...overfueling, yeah. Fuel pump's actually pumping. I think it's just. You feel a bit of hope for old school engineering, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is pumping brown water out of the fuel tank. It's like brand new, yeah. Mm. I'd hate to see what the price it is to get one of those glass bowls these days. Well, seeing as I've just got rid of this thing, I don't want to think about <laughs> working with money. Put some screws back in. Yeah, I'm going to attempt cutting this fuel line right behind. The pump here, because there's a. Um, oh, he's dropping everything on his microphone. That's still working, otherwise, they wouldn't be able to hear us. I think if I try and pick it off the end of this pump, the, sh the actual. Yeah. There isn't much left of the metal bit poking out. Off of there, that disconnects the water come from the tank. Get it on there. You might have borrowed this off your Capri. Oh, that's, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. It was a bit up on there the other week, so. <laughs> you had to go and do the wedding -y thing, you weren't there for the grand start up. I wasn't, but I, yeah. did, I did watch it. Oh, that a massive, great it's big grin on my face. face. Theory. We put this in the petrol can over here. Once we pump some fuel, we should have fuel coming out over there in a minute. Have I got the other two? I've got.
got you the got the others on your side there. Oh, I don't know where I put them. Oh, there we are. I'm not going to overly, overly tighten these. No, because the likelihood of this carburetor actually working is very, very small. Mm. So, we've got fuel in the carburetor. We have. If we put a load of fuel down the carburetor using the... the um, fuel injection system. Fuel injection system. So, I'll have to undo that off of there. Yeah, I'll pop this back up. Looks like the lower it. I didn't want it so fuel everywhere. Yeah, she's well and truly um, trailing up. Right, I, in theory, there should, petrol might start coming out of this pipe. Okay. If it does, we could get all posh and reattach it. Mm -hmm. Right, so if I reattach the ignition system, and then, where's the choke lever? Some in there, haven't we? Mm -hmm. We've got quite a major fuel leak out of there now, haven't we? <laughs> we'll just put a right load of petrol down there, couldn't we? Because I don't think this carburetor is going to do anything until we take it off and clean on it, is it? No, I mean, it looks like it's got barnacles growing all over the end. That fire risk again. Yeah, because I don't think anything is coming out of there. Well, that killed the fuel, eh? Right. Four cylinders is flashy enough, don't you? Mm. Let me try moving the flashing plug to another one just to see if um, yeah. we know that one's flashing. It's almost as if we're firing on one, isn't it? Mm. We're firing on this one as well. Let's go for the dangerous option. <laughs> Slurp on my tea. You slurp on your tea before it goes cold. I'll get a top donger. Right, that's top donger set on boost. Can we give it yet more fuel? We have given it quite a lot of fuel. And we could just keep the fuel supply off for a minute and use it like a fuel based injection system. I'm just up there, yeah. so you're right up. You're oh, happy right, yeah. that. Yeah. <coughs> right, coin is still attached because I forgot to take those off a minute ago. Goes a bit better with the top donger on it, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. I've got, a, I've got a, a fuel bowl full of petrol down here. Definitely. It's, um, it's actually picking up from the can over here. That's unbelievable. Right, let's, um, let's uh, use the fuel injection system to pour a load more down there and completely flood it. And then in a minute, we might have to get posh and try cleaning on the spot. But let's be honest, because we haven't done that yet, have we? No. The starter motor is going to die on us in a minute, isn't it? <laughs> amounts of petrol, isn't it? I mean, what are we doing? 
Sensible. Give them a clean off. Give them a clean off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, put the fuel supply up there. Well, that might be a bit of a Possum. Put the fuel supply out of the way. We'll put it back in the can, don't we? In theory, we have got fuel poke. Po Do you want to go and get the necessary spark plug removing gear then? Indeed. And we'll quickly pull them, and if not, we'll have a go for going tomorrow. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan, Stan, doesn't it? It certainly does. Sounds like a plan. Old school. Old school. Old school. I'll, um, I'll lubricate on them a bit first to see if we can um, get actually get them out. Okay. So we have cleaned on the carburetor. So in theory, there's no reason why that carburetor shan't, shouldn't function. Nope. This fuel pump, in theory, pumps. Yeah. Well, apart from the fact we've got to wang it over the prime said carburetor, could just tip some fuel in the top of it in there, could be that should be the bold option there. Yeah. So if I get some fuel, you attach a battery once you've finished rolling your fag. I'm going to put my fag down because everyone will tell me off trying to blow myself up again. <laughs> um, Screwdriver. <coughs> yes, I should be. And all we've got to do is look the coil up in a minute. And then it might crack off and make some noise. It might do. It might. Or it's completely noise. This never rattle, 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 clang, bang, clang, bang, bang, boom, bang, bang, uh, bang. That would thing, be yeah. juggling pistons for the. Mm. <laughs> Something to do on a Friday afternoon, though, isn't it? Yes, indeed. All right. Anything's got to be better than fixing parasitic or electrical drains on a Saab. Oh. Things we don't fix, cars, and we go lumbered with one. Mm. Mm. Saab straight voxel. But yeah, see, yeah, it's not really a Saab, is it? It's no, really quite General Motors. It'd be the General Motors bit that's broken, won't it? Indeed. <laughs> Should, in theory, a little bit will drip into there. And then the rest of it. Uh, the, the oh, yeah. yeah, the accelerator pump was a pumping. Yeah, she's a... Uh, squirting? Yeah, she's, she's a filling. She's a, squir a squirter. Come on then, give yeah, her a squirt. She's literally... Oh yeah, she's pumping. Right, look up that battery out there, man. Right. And before I do so, we did have some fuel leaks coming out. Uh, yeah, it's coming out the over overflow of the inlet there. It's not there. Yes, yeah. Well, I mean the fact there's a hole in the manifold gasket. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. not in the gasket. In the bottom of the manifold, there's supposed to be a pipage. Oh, we've got a vacuum leak, have we? Yeah, we've just got a great big, oofy great hole. Oh, oh that, that won't be helping things, so will that it? Was, that was just like fuel was pouring out. Right. Hang on. You might that. need a bolt to chuck in there or something. Oh. Well, no wonder the blinking thing won't go. Hmm. Well, excuse me, Mr Ford man, why didn't you mention that yesterday, then? Uh, well, technically, I am a Ford man, but this is this is... Pre seventy, so this is so the beyond stonking great old yeah. Right, I'll go and find some because yeah, we might get some draw through the carburetor. <laughs> then it might stand a bit more of a chance. Yes. Right. Coil's not connected up yet. No. Oh, I'm gonna take that off of there though because that's gonna be a bit of a shebangy bangy. La 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 la. Alright, what else is going on with this carby tutor? Oh, we've got a hole that side too. Well, that tightens up anymore. Well, 
Hill, which I know, right. Yeah, we've actually got one the opposite side as well, in here. They can't have been blocked up with anything, can they? Mm. There's definitely fuel coming out there a minute ago. I think that's a port cooling mission. Hmm. But there's definitely fuel that's coming out from somewhere. Yeah, I don't think it'll be coming out from there. Well, I'll best crank on, I'll crank on these bolts a bit more and get this. No, that's fine. Don't do it. It shouldn't hurt it. Because um, that one's a bit loose, this side. Yeah, I doubt. I thought it was a vacuum on, but... I mean, put your finger over it when I crank it over and you can see a bit. I reckon that's a water-cooled manifold. That would make more sense, because the only thing that could be coming off of there is a... Um, it's a brake booster vacuum, isn't it? But we haven't got that. Yeah. Well, there's definitely fuel is coming out from somewhere. Well, stick your fingers over those holes. Yeah. Like that. And we'll go like this. <laughs> She's definitely stuck as fuel. Yep. Right. That's the electrical lead for turning on the coil. Oh, there it is, for turning on the coil. Yeah, I moved that away because that was attached to the body, and I thought, well... Ugh, this is a bit hot, isn't it? Right. So, do you want to... I'll try and operate the choke. Yep. <laughs> Sparkles off the mm, well, according to the flash cap, we are okay. Unless it's still completely flooded from the other day, right? You can pretend to be choke, leave us there. Yeah, mm, there, that one, one up, no, 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 yeah, that's where, that's where the cable attaches. There, 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 that one, get that one, I'm trying to get Who's that one, I'm trying to get to it. <laughs> Bumping petrol. You've got the screw for the front doing that jubilee cut. I might have to go out the window in a minute. Mm -hmm. I just don't have a taste in the gun. Excuse the gobbing. Mm. Ah, a bit more. Oh. Right, water, watery sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, that does taste vile. Mm. Right, put that back on there because that looks like petrol. Oh, it does taste horrible. Just got a proper gob load in there as well. Right, safety conscious fuel cell installed. Choke. Only I'm shooting out the top of the car right now. Probably means the float sunk. I think the battery might be about. This is a good. This is a new battery. Mm. Right, let's give it a bit less choke. <laughs> top donger. Top donger. Right. Mm -hmm. Bit of chokage. Right, we might need to turn the fuel supply off in a minute because I think the, I think the float sunk. Don't you? The amount of fuel coming out of the top of that car. Right? Yeah. 
Open it up. You had to have some air. Alright, don't you have to pull on it, will you? That's it. It's not doing any of the firings. No. It's definitely got sparkles. Probably flooded it again, haven't we? Well, he's not. He's not shooting out any. Not really. Huh? I'm not sure I love fuelage in that bloody moment. Make it work. Hmm. The accelerator pump isn't too much of a worry as long as it. Right. Try again. Yep. Must have enough fuel. We tipped half a gallon down there. It can't be water. Right, watch your eyebrows, all right? Yep. Might need to go and get spark plug in. I'm assuming, of course, that the spark plugs are actually any good. He's wet. Oh, she's yeah. a sparking, isn't she? Ooh. Yeah. Huh. Did just shoot hot gas out of a cylinder that wasn't lit? Yeah, it could be a multitude of things, couldn't it? It did just fire. And the timing doesn't look like it's been moved. Well, we'll have to line it up on TDC and stuff otherwise, huh? Right, we're going to have another go. Yep. It did fart then, didn't it? It did. trying to execute myself. Mm, there's nothing happening on that one, is there? Mm. I thought we had flashings incoming on this one. I thought we did. Mind you, we might be getting flashings on the... On the... Oh, I suppose the plug's dead, isn't it? Mm. So that's rubbish. Yep. Where's the old set of spark plugs out here, Capri? Different, different thread. Yeah. But there was some spark plugs in Don's toolbox that time. Where do we throw them? They're either in the binage or in the scrappage out the backage. Oh. I'll give me a mo moment. I'll, uh, I'll go, go and retrieve check the a load. Yeah, I'll go and check these because that's a bit weird. It could be a lead, couldn't it? Actually, let's check it isn't a lead. Well, no, could be the on the old yeah, it might be enough to spark the, the flashlight, but not the... Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it's nothing like that one. Yeah. That's weird. Hang on. Right, one. That was that one, wasn't it? Let's just use this one as a testing. 
Alright. Oh, I don't want to mix two of these up now. We can work that out. Come on. Yeah. I'm sure that's not as pretty to add. That looks quite a sizable fish no, because on the pintos, they're yeah. a big they're a bigger diameter. Like um no, we can probably find four Mankey Spark plugs around here somewhere to test the fish. That one's definitely got Spark. Mm -hmm. Some Spark coming off of that one, not very well. Yeah, she's sparking. We're definitely not sparking on any of these others, or is it just an electrical rubbishness? <laughs> Couldn't see him coming out of that plug, could you? We've definitely got some there. I think we need some spark plugs, Mark. I'll go and see if I can find some. Right. We've got one good one. Three far too short Volkswagen ones, but if a Volkswagen one screws in this hole, I'm re relatively confident it will do. To a degree. Yeah, that goes in there. So I know they're too short, but at least they spark. Yeah. So it's not as if we're going around the world in this, is it? No. No. And have three spark plugs one size. Qualities. Oh, we've actually got three duff spark plugs. Oh, where did I put the other two? They're on the bench in there, aren't I? Because I'm going to need the twiddly bits off the top of them. Ah, okay. This one, this one is the good one, isn't it? Yeah, this, yeah. this is the bad one. That's a duff one. Yeah, we need one more. Uh, one more screw bit. One more screw bit. This one does the sparking, isn't that? That's just just backing. This one's spark. Mm -hmm. Right, shall we go for it again then? So we have one Ford spark plug, three Volkswagen ones that are too short. Might do something. So one anti clockwise. One three four two. Alright. Turn I have to turn the camera on. Yes. Petroleum. Good slosh. Yes. Yes, yes. That might explain why we weren't getting much sense out of it, might I? Yeah. Uh, coil attached. Flash cap attached. You on choke duty? I'm on choke duty. Okay, choke duty. Hmm. We're getting much more sense out of it, aren't we? No. Oh, there's lots of fuel coming out there. We have timing out, don't we? Timing is out. Right, let's go round one then. So, we'll go back one. Because the leads are all over the snotty place, aren't they? Uh, one, three, four, um, and two. Yes? Yes. Right. Eyebrows! Eyebrows! <laughs> So that was that was firing. That was firing, but pre TDC, wasn't it? Mm. 
Alright, we're under the night yow. Back with the under night yow. Where is the timing now? Alright, so if we go. Let's make that. Let's go. Oh, I think we're too far forward. So, one. Number four, shouldn't it? Yeah. Four. Two. Right. And again. Mm -hmm. Well, lovely pop pop. Right. So, we've only got one more to go, really. <laughs> so, one. Number four. One, two. I'm quite glad they got that one all muddled up, but and again. Yep. That sounds a bit more promising, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You're gonna play choke. Let's go choke. Or three quarter choke. <laughs> It's been, the timing doesn't look like it's moved since God was a boy. And you're assuming that an angle box is timing like every other. And you are still. I reckon she's getting closer. Don't you? Yeah. I think we were nearly on the um, on the run-ins then, weren't we? Shall I hit it again? Yeah, we all plugged in. All, all of them yeah, 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 we're all alive. <laughs> running on something then, wasn't it? Mm. Have to wait for the top dollar to come back to life again. Something happened there, didn't it? Yeah. Looks like that, we got some first sticky valves. Mm. I'm not sure if this is this this it's an interference engine or No, it wouldn't be that, would it? One, three, four, two. It was almost away. <laughs> Give it the throttle edges. Number one, and then we'll work the timing out, work the timing out from there. We won't know what top to attempt on number one is until we can look at the valves, though, will we? Well, theoretically, you'll you be able to see where the ah, uh, yeah, thank you, actually. See where the CD mark comes. Can you go mark on the front like a pinto. Nothing. Dent in time. That could be the mark, actually. I don't know. I don't know. It's a time across Or a pre cross Or a pre cross I can't really know what to do. Uh, it seems weird that every single lead had moved. Mm. I'm going to put it back forwards one, to be honest. Because I wonder if that's valves rather than one. 
three. I don't know what that is. Tiny. Bit of chokage. Mm, yeah. A little bit. Uh, I, haven't got a car, I haven't got a coil looked up now. Come on, grow it all. It's definitely igniting the fuel from earlier, wasn't it? Yeah. We've got petrol vapor and we're out of a carburetor. Mm -hmm. Try again, shall we? Yep. I think we're going to go and need to change the timing. That's the timing marker right there. You've got a point on your side. Pointer. Here. No. That will help. Um, if it will turn by hand, which I don't know if it will. Stuff down, get some. Hang on, let me just disconnect the thing. Yeah, <laughs> all of a sudden fires up, backfires, and it's all there. Uh, burns your side. hand, takes your hands off. Takes my hands off. All right, let me go and get a socket. And Hmm. Ratchet. See all the piston. I can't think it's just start. It's much easier if they just start, wouldn't it? Hmm. Screwdriver. Well, that is too decent. Yeah. Well, just move the engine a little bit with your socket. Because I think I'm sat there on a piston. Yeah, totally. Right. Stop the center. I don't actually take this know on which stroke it is though, do we? No. But if we look at the where the, where the rotor arm is. You've got an idea that it should be firing on that cylinder. Yeah. And if it doesn't and it goes cough bang wallop. It's the wrist 180 out. Or wherever someone decided to put the distributor. Yeah. Yeah. But in theory. The theory is good. Oh, I don't do petrol engines. I don't understand petrol engines. Well, I do understand them, not which one is I do. Right, rotor arm is pointing. Oh. Down that way. So. Right, number one. Number one is, they were either under an 80 out, mm -hmm. which makes this number one. All right? But, yeah. But, uh, I don't think we, we tried that earlier, so that's one, three. That stretches over to four. Yeah, four, one, then back this one down here, back to two. I have a feeling we may have tried this earlier. I think we did. Right, we'll try that again. I have a feeling we're all just going to get flames, don't you? Yeah. So then that's 180 out. Then. That's 180 out. Which so we, which means we were correct in the first place in having. So this is number one. Yeah. One. Um, probably means it's just rubbish then. Four would be that one. Two there. I don't think it can be carburetion completely, because in theory, if you tip fuel down it, it should at least fire. Mm -hmm. Unless it has no valve springs closing, or. Can we try the compression in a minute using the ratchet, see if we've got any? Might be able to feed it for me. Yeah. He'd have said he was firing totally out there, wouldn't you? Mm. I don't think his distributor's been moved. <laughs> it's gone, Mr. Boy.
sense to have two shorter leads there. One, three, four, which is not a huge way for one. And two, which is a short one. Hmm. Right. That's the closest thing to a fire we've got. Mm -hmm. Apart from that is now... Definitely loads of fuel in here, isn't it? I'm assuming. Doesn't seem to do an awful lot of firing, though, does it? No. Definitely put on these plugs. I mean, that's one of the original Ford ones. Why are the valves are stuck? Don't you? Well, no, because when you had your hand over it earlier yeah, on. Yeah, but that could only be one cylinder, couldn't it? True. And it's not sucking your arm off. <laughs> of a spark, is it? No. Oh, it's enough to... Doesn't even smell purely. Don't leak. Oh, I'll take your plug off now. Yeah. That's a spark. It's not much of one, but it's enough to ignite it, isn't it? Mm. Well, there's no fuel on that at all. I was expecting that to be almost washed out, weren't you? Yeah. Perhaps we just haven't poured enough petrol down it. Or maybe it's the running. Oh, so we seem to have gone from. I think the accelerator pump might have died. Or not. Hmm. That's the Ford one again. That's the Ford one. I suppose we could, what we could do is make a compression test on it, can't we? We could. Where's one of them round here? Wedgie in a spark plug hole. Well, she's soaked. Yeah. So that one's definitely getting the fuels. Well, what we could be just to see if we got any compression is we can do the agricultural compression test. Bigger over the end. Bigger over the hole. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't get sucked in. We got compression on that one. Yeah. We definitely got compression on that one. We got fuckloads of compression on that one. Let's have. So we definitely got compressions. I mean, it's a weak spark because the points of poop. Could well be. But it's just. Just enough maybe just about to flash the light, but not. Because we know that coil's good. Or the leads are gas. Hmm. 
What's up with them spark plug tester things? I don't even know why. Right. Right. Mm, I suppose the other possibility is that the mice have built a massive nest right in the end of the. Um, That one's back. That one's dry. Hmm. Bit weird, isn't it? This is a bit strange. <laughs> Ain't no compression on that one. None? Not a sausage. <laughs> nope. Ah. That will explain why we're getting hot gases out, but I reckon we're going to need to go and find a Phillips up screwdriver, take the rocker cover off and do some beating on it. Yes. I think, now, well, I think we've got two cylinders possibly with the compressions. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got one blowing gas straight into the... That would explain why it's hooking fuel out of the top of the carburetor. Because we've got one just blowing back through. I think we've got two sets of slightly stuck valves. So if there ain't no compression on number three, we'll be reckoning on number four then. We've got lots of compression on number four. Ah, so we just got to beat on one. Three. Three, yeah, I mean, one, as in, as in, as in, as in, as in, as in. Yeah. Yeah. What we've got is all the fuel getting blown all over the place. I reckon going in that valve open, haven't we? Or at least your inlet, probably. Yeah. Right, let's go and get a... Or it's got a completely melted piston. There's nothing left of it. I suppose we could just check there is something going up and down, and the reason that they left this in a barn for 25, 30 years... Because it was pooped. Because it was... <laughs> well, it was packed. Get your ratchet out. <laughs> right. I think I can, f I can feel the top of a piston. Mm. Yep, that's definitely a piston. Right. right. We can bring them back up. I'm not really worried. It moved, so right. that's about... As much as, ooh, you might not need a Phillips screwdriver. Might be able One to, size fits all. Might be able to bodger it with this one. Oh, she is smooth. Honestly. I don't believe it. I mean, if, that, if, that, I, if I was to try and do that, I'd spend about four hours just to get one that, bloody that bolt out. It's probably almost as old as you are. Wow, wow, wow. Actually, yeah, no. actually, no, it's older than me because it's, it's a good 10 years older than me. Is there anything in the world that old? There is. I didn't realise there Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Right, go on then. We'll see if you can affect some. Rocker cover removal. I've got a strange feeling it's going to rain. Yeah. I think I might just move, remove from your fuel cell so I can smoke. And I think your pipe has fell out of your fuel cell again, isn't it? Ah, that explains why we're getting no fuelage. Don't know. Right, this one's going to be a little bastard because this is in the way. Hang on. Might, have, Hang on. might have to Hang just, on. just get the spanners out and remove that a minute. Do you need me to remove the, uh, the heater blower? Right? That's it. There we are. Got some access now. Lovely, I'll just bend that bit back in there, so... There we go. I should be able to get this one off. Now it's got a bit of crud in there. Let's try and get that off. Oh, no. No? No, no, she's, she's undoing. She's undoing. We've got to be careful, though, that we don't get any rush to go down into this lovely little engine. Well, yes. Yeah. Hang on, let me... Well, shall I remove the... Um you give me that screwdriver. Yeah, I reckon yeah. there's a fair possibility that I could actually unscrew the heater blower motor. Oh. Oh. Maybe, maybe not. Look at that. Wonderful. Right, hang on. I'll put a better elf and 
safety now, isn't it? Alpha safety. Alpha. Alpha. Don't cut yourself on it. No, right? no. Right. right. That's all the voltages out. Ooh, must have been filler with some of that Ooh, mesh. That. that was some of that motorman mesh, Halford stuff that oh, you'd get in, you get back that in there. That was repairing the heater, mate, in the heater's box. <laughs> right. Um, is this ready to come off? Yes. Right. Do you want to just pop that? There we go. Have that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so that. Just for quality purposes. I think. Oh, I reckon it's that one there, boss. I reckon it's that one there. Oh, it's got a broken valve spring. Uh, oh, you know what we did yesterday? What's that? We gave. Oh, bollocks. So I suppose we want to get them back again. Yeah. Shall we try rocking that arm on the top dead center and seeing if um. Let's see if it is any. She does look like she's been well serviced and looked after. I mean, there's not any black, gooey, disgusting oil build-up in there at all, is there? No. No. It's well, it's just... just uh, beautiful. So, in theory, if this is an interference engine, we could crack it top dead centre. That sounds horrible. That's the start of my OT, catching. Yeah. That's fine, we'll be dealing with that. This valve's not even bloody moved. Right. Now we're on a... Ah, that's because it's she's. That's, yeah, that's because it's stuck. Because he's a little bit jammy now. Well, he will be getting that valve. I mean, we might be able to beat on that and get away without replacing the valve spring. I think with a can of wood of 40 and some hitting there, yep. there's some spring left in that broken valve. Yeah. That's a hope, isn't it? It does. Or we've completely bent it by beating it with an engine, and this is now more dead than we thought it was dead before. <laughs> and there'll be lots of Ford people crying, going, what have you done to that? <laughs> One in particular said... <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Yeah. I mean... Do you get a lever Do you want a lever on that, see if it will knock it back up again? I don't think it's hitting on it, is it? Oh, no, because he's, he's kind of... Got well, a bit locky-locky. Well, that's fine, just give it a good clamp. It might pop back up again. Do you want? Just no, it's just tightening the bolt. Come back. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. It's gone through. It's gone through. It's pushed oh, through. I think it. that's the starter motor. Right, take your finger out of the way. Yep. Oh, that's the starter motor. Oh. So, hang on. Oh, I, I think we're going to get a can of wood and hit on that. I'll go and get the equipment. Do you want to put the kettle on? I'll put the kettle on. Mom. So we have discovered that it would appear that this valve here is a bit stuck. The rest of them seem to be all right-ish. But that one has slightly died. That won't be helping with our attempted game of going. So what we're going to try and do is bash on that a bit. Maybe do some levering. To see if we can get it pop back up again. It's obviously got left open because the... It ain't, it ain't doing the moving. But what my cunning plan is now, using this arrangement of gear that I have assembled, is to attempt beating on the top of this valve a wee bit, just to see oh, if we can drop a load of stuff or free it off. Oh, she is tight. Oh, not that tight.
scroll this, isn't it? Come on, Mr. Bell, pop back up again. Got it to move down, but I don't think that was helping things particularly much. It is, it is very, very stuck. Right, to the point I think I could break the um, the keepers out of it or the collet. But I don't think she's a moving. Oh, might have moved. It's obviously non-interference because I can't hit it with a piston to knock it back up again, which is quite disappointing. <laughs> That was the plan. Well, whether it's moving or not. Well, I am technically levering on the side of a, of a valve with a lever bar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not really what you're supposed to do. But. Well, I think that may move down. Sure, how good this valve spring's gonna be. We might have given Stuart the set of Ivan twin valve springs we had for it yesterday. Yeah. We didn't think he was gonna need them. No. Uh, well, it's possible. Are they twins or singles? They're singles, aren't they? Yeah. He's obviously never got around to fitting that bit, which probably means he hasn't got around to fitting the cane cam either. Not that any of that really matters to us. No. I'm surprised it won't go on three, though. Unless it's just it's chucking all its fuel, because that is an inlet manifold valve, isn't it? Uh, yes. Inlet, exhaust, 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 inlet. Yes. So I think what we're getting is it hoffing all its petrol back out the top of the thing. Technically, I just this bar. Do you and I have had this bar for nearly 24 and a half years. Bloody hell. It used to be really posh with quite a long handle on it. Uh -huh. Got it off Hugh from General Workshop Supplies. He used to come around in the van, right? Mm -hmm. He's actually retired. <laughs> and he wasn't terribly old. I didn't think when he sold it to him. But he must have sold a lot of them because I was somewhere the other day. And the MOT station had got them. I thought, I've got one of those bars. He's like, I've got one off Hugh from General Workshop Supplies. I'm like, there you go. Bloody hell. It's my favourite bar. It's your favourite? It is literally just my favourite. It was much nicer before I baked on the end of it and then the handle. <laughs> you got smaller. <laughs> <laughs> when I had to cut it off twice. <laughs> so what I'm doing is levering on this brass heater valve. Mm -hmm. Obviously, to, cause that, that's what you do. Yeah. Um, please don't follow this, anyone. This is not the way. Can you leave it with a slight... Can you get the end of that under the other side or not? I don't think you can, can you? I wonder if I can get under this. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a question. Let's do it once. What's what? Oh! Well, I if you pull and I tap it a bit... Yep. Hang on. There's a rocker sat on it, man. Jeez. Well, that seat must have been down when we, when we picked it. I think that was... She is in there. She's in there, yeah. She is in there. <coughs> I don't want to take the head off of it. No. Well, we can. It'll take about ten minutes, but... <coughs> that sounds far too much effort. <laughs> I suppose the other possibility is that it's, the valve's so, so bent that it's folded in on itself and we can't... Well, I don't remember. We did check that it did the revolutions... We did, and it turned over no, nice, I, and, nice and I free. Don't think, I don't think this is interference engine. No. And if it, even if it was, it had a bent push rod. Mm. And it hasn't. That push rod is, is to what I can feel, streak. Ish. <coughs> now, I think that's the root of our problem. Because, oh. of course, every time she's coming up with a compression, she's just blowing it straight back up the manifold. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, we have two choices. We start on three spark plugs with nothing in the hole. 
No compression. Yeah. So it might not blow when it's petrol out the top. I mean, there's a possibility that once that's warmed up, it might pop out, but I mean, I'm not terribly confident. And we've probably got nothing to lose. Yeah. Can we try doing that? We'll give it a go. It's a stupid idea, but. It might just work. Hit the button, just see if it rotates. I have done it in the thing. I couldn't see it clacking into anything, because I mean, it ain't going to whack that bell. <laughs> Side job in it. Mm, right. Now, I don't need to put that back on. Really. It's not as if vast amounts of oil are going to come gushing out everywhere, is it? So, one. Three. I need to ignore that spark plug. Don't want that one anymore. One, three, four, two. Petroleum. It's interesting to see if it does fire once it's not blowing everything back out of the manifold, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, the only thing it is going to do is sling fuel at me. But seeing as we like living that dangerously. Right, so... Coil... Top power. And we're not quite sure where we got the timing, are we? No. I think we've got the timing miles out now. Yeah, do you? Yeah. I reckon if we put this one back to one, where he originally was... Yeah, one. That one would have gone to three. three. Let's put that over here. Three, four. No. No, no, no. Uh, that this one would have been three, but we're not using. Oh, them sorry. Three. Yeah, one, three, four. Hang on, I can't use it. Yeah, one, three, four, two. Yeah. Right, I'm ready for some flames. <laughs> flames. <laughs> Press the green button down and hold it. Oh, it's red um, so in theory, see what happens? See what happens. It's not far out of it, is it? Hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Have loads of petrol. firing in it. Yeah. Not firing, sorry. No. Uh, yeah, sparkings, but no fire. One. Let's come back round into one. Three we don't want. One, three. Let's get rid of you. Four. Oh, of course, you always squeeze that spark plug in, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's just a clue for you. One, three, four, two. It's as if it's not doing anything now. Mm. So, complete whiz round again, check the R818 out. One. This isn't a one four three two, is it? What are we doing then? Doing a three. The handbook's lying in the car. What the handbook? Handbook, like a. Mm -hmm. We're not doing very well, really. We're supposed to be like brilliant, capable YouTubers who just do this in seconds, you know. The new Anglia range. Whoa! I, I thought this was the first Anglia, isn't it? Dimensions. Oh, it is well flooded. 
Might be half the reason doesn't want to do anything. on the little bench grinder and see what happens. <laughs> well, that works all right. Ah, that'll explain why then. <clears throat> Basically, we got the firing order wrong then. So, one, we're going to go for one as being that one. One, yeah. Two, yeah. Yeah. Four. Hang on, hang on, hang on, a mouse trying to work his axe. He's, he's gnawed it up already and he hasn't even started yet. See, one, two, four, which is that one. Mm -hmm. And we're not worrying about three because that's broken. Yes. Right. And if it goes pop, then we know that it's 180. Yeah, it shoots flames out of my side and sets fire to me. I'm not going to be terribly impressed, but it shouldn't do. <laughs> and, and I found the hood fucking thing. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Too late now. You've broken it. <laughs> Where is it? It's right in the centre. It's got fucking hood written on it. Well, well that's how much to confuse a man by having a lever that says hood. I bet it doesn't work. It does. Where is it? Get it out. Oh, well, that, oh, I thought that was a heater control. <laughs> that's what I thought when I first saw it. Oh. That's not a heater control. Right, let's prime it a bit. Just for the more chance of me dying over this side. Right. Now, do you want to choke it? Okay, and I'm going to lean back. Right. We're 180 out. I know that because I haven't got any hair left on my arm now. <laughs> I've got no eyebrows. <laughs> right, one. Yeah. Yeah. Two. Are you sure the internet's not lying to you? I'm there? sure, I'm right, sure. One, two. Right, was it one, two? Or three. Right, that one. And then we're not worrying about three. Yeah. I haven't got any air left on my arm now, it's gone. <laughs> but that would also explain that the short ease at the front ease and the long ease at the side. Possibly. Yeah. Might not explain the lack of arm hair left on my arm. At least you managed to dive out of the way. But anyway, what we're going to do now is go for that gain yeah. using this remote starting device. I'm going to move this camera over here <laughs> using my foot on. I'm going to poke it from over here so I don't get lit up. <laughs> it's a good fire then, isn't it? Mm. Get on the chokes then. Actually, I might even give it a fuel supply. Wouldn't it? That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Big can of flammable liquid right next to the um, open oh, vent. We've got no. Oh, it's fell off. <laughs> it's, it's only blown, blood, blown the bloody the doors, doors off. off. Yeah, no, that's um, sort of expected, that, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we're going to have to. What have we got? I don't really want to get sucking off the back there. It's just right, the last one. Let's pour some more flammable liquid over the engine bay. Right. Oh, that's that. Yeah, that. Let's just have a two seconds. It's going to kill us 
assholes. <laughs> Right, are you ready? Are you yeah. want the choking nurses? Hang on, hang on. Hang on, let me connect the old doofus. Oh, up. I love the way that you're all panicky now, the possibility of it catching fire. You've got the sensible side. I've got the one with a big hole in it that spits flame out of it. What we need is a bloody great snooker cue, so you can go right from the front. Right, OK. Go on, then. Give it choke, to choke. Choke it. <laughs> state of the spark plugs I haven't done up properly enough. Oh, that one's firing because I've got smoke coming out of the hole. So, as long as the battery's booked itself again. Honestly, that's a, that was a brand new battery. It wasn't very impressive, was it? No. I might have flattened it with a Saab for the last two days, but... This one's here, we got me. Gonna go for gold, you know. Right, you hold the choke. I'm leaning this way. Oh, I think we are officially out of batch room. Hmm. I think we may need to work on this valve. I'll charge more batteries up and have another go tomorrow. Yeah. Days does it take to get? It's because it's a Ford, you know. That's what it is. Yeah. Saying my coffee's gone cold too. Oh, my tea's probably gone cold too. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's mine. Mine's lumpy. Blah, 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 blah. Can I can I can you pass me that hammer? Or more tightly loads into a valve adjuster, do you mind? Valve adjuster. Because I am beating a um, a cheap screwdriver, a valve adjustment tool, a valve adjustment tool, in between the two. Shall I get this other valve adjustment tool? Let's see if it'll give a little bit of a lever while you're doing that on your side, like that. Yeah, I don't know whether that's actually doing anything. Oh, don't go breaking it. Why are we going gently with it? Mm. The temptation is to use that valve adjusting tool to lower it again. Oop. That's when I have to box it off. <laughs> That's not like to do damage it. So actually, well, if we clamp that over there. Look at that! Ooh. That's much better on the access front. is coming around, isn't it?
Give it a squirt of wood, huh? Wood, huh? Anyone would think we was mechanics, you know. Squirty, squirty. Right, so uh. if we bash this broken valve spring back where it's supposed to be, like that. Yeah. I mean, no one is going to say that that is particularly good. Get a squirt. That's, that's sounding pretty reasonable. Mm. It's not a lot of... It might just be enough, you know. I mean, I think I'm open, to be honest. What's the worst that can happen? Can't be any worse than it was a minute ago. Now I've got to try and hit this back on top of this push rod. Mm. That could be a bit more technical. Yeah, right. You pushy pushy. Right. Should we try the compressionals? Yeah. I doubt we're going to have much. But we've got enough to keep it closed. Oh. We haven't. We have got a bit of compression. So we could go like a four cylinder. We could, we could attempt putting four spark plugs back in it. Come on. Yes. We'll have to go find another battery then. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. What have we got that we can take? A digger or is that? No, I've already used the digger one. The digger one's gone. Right? Digger one's gone. Brand new Saab one is flat. Everything else is going to be bolted down. One of my my LT behind you, I think, is rubbish. Where's this piece of plate that's fell off down here? Oh, no, that's that's one of those, um... That might have been a bit of heat box. Hmm. Well, we've revolutionised the valve train. We have. We've pretty much fixed it. I know. She's, um, she's like brand new, man. She's brand new. Mm. Apart from that slightly broken bit, but... It's only broken on one end. Yeah, I can't really think. I didn't think we'd get it out of there enough to sort of repair on it because we're going to have to drop the valve. Yeah. I mean, unless a man could jam a jammy bar underneath it through the spark plug hole and put a Mercedes CDI valve spring that we've got bucket loads of in there. But I reckon if it's free, it's, we might have enough to run on three and a bit cylinders. Yeah. I mean, it is sort of closing. going to say it's good. We might run like that. Mm. Right, sprinter battery, coil attached, almost four cylinders. Almost four cylinders, just for good measure, let's put the fucking back on there and it just... It's not oh, no, that'll be yeah. cool, but... Oh, no. Right, do you want to choke it? Would help if I attached the full supply, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh! Getting the misty coming up through. Where's the accelerator pump actually moving? Oh, this is the accelerator pump and then pump fuel. Mm. Right. Give it the chokers, this is. Or like a bit of choke, maybe. A little bit of chokage. <laughs> established that
that she's probably about three and a half cylindered. But she's that, that's alive. a runner. Did you see my bravery and how I dived out the way of the flame engine for a second? Just like in the movies. Just like in the movies. Right, so we try that again with some choke. Yeah, I'm, well, ooh, she's, she, I'm just throwing a little fuel in. Oh, she's, yeah. she's falling off. Ah, uh, that's probably why it stopped. Hang on. Uh, oh, that valve spring's completely cacked itself and died. We saw, I think, there's a fair, fair likelihood that number three valve spring has slightly quit again. But, as you would have seen, she was, probably for the last time before any description of, she's going to be dismantled, basically. Yeah. She's dead. So she's had her last hurrah. There's no point in attempting to move it, because well, it, it's not going to run anymore. The clutch pedal see solid. Um, the wheel's no turning. No turning. Well, two, two turning. Two, two turn, the other the other two. Um, no matter how much you beat them with a sledgehammer, they ain't going roundy round. They're going to need some restoration, aren't they? Yeah. But we have found a man who wants it for bits for his one. So in theory, it sort of lives on, or the wheel arch off of it does, and so I'm sure it'll, it'll come in useful because it, it, it's done its day. So um, can you get a 105e Ford angle box? Angle box that you found in a shed that had been sat there and is probably one of the rustiest cars I've ever owned to go. It's on a par actually. Now the rustiest car I've ever owned was that, I well, haven't seen that, that was that um, uh, Corsair that we pulled out where I had to pull it out chunks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, there you go. Thank you very much, Al, 6D Diesels. Mm -hmm.